lecture, we're going to look at visualizing numbers. Let's start with visualizing integers. To visualize integers, we use number lines. So we put a tick mark on the number line, say 0. We decide that we want to go in increments of 1. If you go 1 to the right, you go positive. 1 to the left, you go negative. So if I go increments of 1 up, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. If I go increments of 1 below 0, then I'm going to have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So you can see I'm using a scale of 1 uh, from 0. If you take a look at this next number line, I have 0, and then I go 5,000, 10,000. And if I do that, then I'm using 1 unit x worth 5,000. And so I'm going in increments of 5,000, going up positive numbers from 0, going down is negative numbers from 0. You don't always have to use 0 on the number line. For example, here I have a number line, and I'm saying this first tick mark I'm showing is negative 2,001. Second tick mark is 10,000. So I'm using the scale of 1 unit equals 12,001. For a video log, answer the following question. What would be the worth of another tick mark to the left of negative 2,001? What would be the worth of a tick mark that is to the right of 10,000? You can also plot number lines vertically. You see this in measuring cups, thermometers, weight scales. And so when you do that, again, you have to specify what scale you are using. One unit is 10 here. Sometimes you'll see markings in terms of a tenth or fifths. And here we have uh, zero representing this tick mark. So I'm going in units of 10 up would be positive and down would be negative. So 10, 20, 30, or negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. You can also think of integer placements directionally in your head, even if you don't actually plot any numbers as negative being to the left of zero, positive integers being to the right of zero. Sometimes people view negative as debt. That also helps visualizing where your numbers are, and it will help you in doing arithmetic problems later with sign numbers. So fractions, to visualize fractions, we're going to start first with visualizing them as part of a whole. So let's start with uh, some pictures. We have a picture here. We're, we're taking the whole shape and bringing it into three equal pieces. And so this piece here is one out of three because one third because it's one out of the three pieces we have. Here we have one sixth because I have this piece as one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six equal pieces and I'm taking one of them. Again, you can see how we can visualize different ways one sixth. Here we have one sixth because you have six equal triangles making this hexagon. This circle is broken into quarters, and so this is one quarter. So here's your next um, question. What if I say this represents one third of the shape? What does the whole shape look like? Yes, that's right. If you say one third here, here's another one third, and here's another one third, even though this is the same shape, these two together make a third of the whole thing versus here, this one triangle makes a sixth of the whole thing. Here you can see that even though I'm representing three sevenths, it's made up of 12 individual feet, but this whole shape is broken into seven equal parts, and I'm taking three equal pieces, so that's why this represents three sevenths. Here, this particular shape is not broken into equal pieces, but we can move stuff around and say how this piece can come and sit here. So there's that piece that originally existed. Here's the second one that we moved. And so now this shape has converted to looking like this. This is equal pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here our answer will be 3 sevenths because we have made it so that it's all equal parts. So here's another overview. On the number line, you're breaking into quarters. So 1 quarter, 2 1 quarters, 3 1 quarters, four one quarters, which will make, you know, a whole, and then five one quarters, six one quarters, and so on. You can see three quarters represents so many different things. Here, this three quarters is way more than this three quarters because this hole is bigger than this hole. Here are three quarters. You start at zero, you land on three quarters. If you start with one quarters, you have one, two, three, you land here. 
If you start at three quarters, you'll have one, two, three. So you can move in quarters any different ways because the number line is broken into quarters. We can also represent decimal numbers and rational numbers on a number line. You take big tick mark represents negative 2.134. The next big tick mark represents negative 2.135. You can see how it's broken into 10 equal pieces or there are nine tick marks and you have tenths, hundredths, one thousandths, tenth, hundredths, one thousandth place. So if you divide this into 10 equal pieces, we have one over ten thousandths. So each tick mark represents one over ten thousandths. So this next one, this red, red tick mark here, will be negative 2.1341. Next one will be negative 2.1342. And then 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then negative 2.135. So if you look at this two, these two tick marks, I have negative 2.1358 because I've gone 8 units this way. And this will be uh, plotted on this number line. And we'll take this one and plot it again on this number line. The reason I'm doing this is to show you how you can break this in 10 equal pieces, but you won't be able to see it because it's so close to each other. So I've zoomed in and made this bigger so you can see how the next tick mark would look like. So if I pick this tick mark in the middle, then since I'm starting with negative 2.1357, this tick mark here will be negative 2.1357, 72, So this allows us to plot as many tick marks as you want. You just have to keep extending the number line and zooming in depending on how many digits you want. So we can pretty much plot all rational numbers on a number line. Irrational numbers, on the other hand, you can plot an approximate uh, number but not an exact number because they are non-terminating. So you don't really know where they sit exactly, but you can pinpoint it to the nearest hundreds or the nearest ten thousand however close you want to be. On this next one, you can see how I'm plotting zero here and moving in, making one, two, three, four equal pieces. So again, I'm moving in quarters. And as we saw before, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters will make a one, and so on. And so you can go in quarters because I have chopped into four equal pieces. However, you can do something similar if you want to plot different fraction if I want to plot into six, I'll have to have six equal pieces between two big tick marks. So if you look over here, I have four and five broken into six equal pieces, and I'll end up with then four and one sixth, two six, three six, four six, five six, and six six. Six six would be another one additional from four that will make it a five. However, if you look, this whole six can be broken into groups of three. So here's three and here's three. So now you have two equal pieces. This red represents two equal pieces. So I can even go in halves. If I take two of these little segments, now I have thirds because here's one third, two thirds, three thirds. And so if you want to plot multiple fractions on the same number line, you must have a common denominator so that they can both fit in this markings and groupings here. So here's another overview of how to plot numbers on a number line. I'm doing in fifths in this particular case. To practice what you have just learned, attempt these problems. One number line for each of the six questions here. And for the next set, you are given number lines and you're asked what these tick marks with question marks represent.